I heard about this and thought it would be a good strategy to use it to revive the association. That was my motive. You know? But as I went into it, I really uh, came to believe and uh, understand and to value uh, the whole uh, concept itself. Yeah? And I took the trouble to visit some U3As in other countries and uh, to see how they function and how we can function here. We started actually uh, two years ago, yeah, and we made quite a lot of mistakes. Yeah? Uh, for one thing, because we are brought up in this environment, very materialistic and so on, we thought it's about conducting courses, paying our trainers and so on. And uh, when I went over there to share, both in the UK and uh, Australia, uh, and I told them that we pay our trainers and so on, even the minor fee, yeah? They were shocked. Oh, pay your trainers? <laughs> he said, no. He said, at this stage in life, uh, people with a lot of expertise and so on, they are only too glad to share. Yeah? They cannot bring it to their grave. And they share uh, uh, without charge. You know? And even if their charges is very popular. So we took that lesson to heart. And we actually uh, changed our whole model. Yeah? And Actually, says itself, yeah, it's, uh, was formed 34 years ago in those uh, adult educational days. So, and most of its members were either trainers or consultants. So, we have a very rich resource of expertise, yeah. And most of the people who were uh, in the society have also aged, you know. <laughs> so, they've reached this age of 50, 60, and so on. And at the right age, when they are prepared to share. So uh, when we changed the model over, and, uh, and that's when, when we, we, uh, we changed the model and then we officially launched it uh, on the 31st of March uh, this year. So today, officially, it's nine months old. But actually, we've been working for it in the two uh, preceding years. Yeah. So let me now share with you some of the fundamentals of this uh, three a concept. This is one of the most famous sayings. Yeah? U3A, yeah? where teachers also learn and learners also teach. What do you make of it? We learn from each other. Exactly. Yeah? Uh, so they try to say, when you reach this stage, uh, all are equal. Yeah? Some may know more, some may know less, but uh, you share. Yeah? And even if you are teaching, you learn from it as well. It's a very good concept. And learners, uh, you learn now, you share with others. That's the fundamental concept. Yeah. And uh, it is a worldwide movement. In fact, it's recognized as a non-government organization, uh, accredited by United Nations, recognized by UNESCO, recognized by the World Health Organization. Yeah? I mean, it has 40 years of history. And Different countries of France, mm -hmm. UK, Australia, and so on. Yeah? So, this is what a French organization or? It's, it's a worldwide organization. I know, but where's the origin? origin? France. Right. Yes. In fact, it's a, in a little university town called Toulouse. I was there. Where? Toulouse. Yeah, Toulouse. Yeah. Not the winner. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, the vision, as we conceptualize, of course, every U3A differs in their idea different ways. So we have talked over and uh, started that our vision would be to have a richer stage where all third ages, yeah, mainly those who have retired, nearing retirement or semi-retirement, yeah, all third ages living meaningful and happy lives. Yeah? That's the vision. Yeah? And how do we try to bring this mission about? By engaging third ages and continuing learning activities. Yeah? And the way we do it is also very uh, special. Yeah. Now, um, apart from this basic ideal, uh, we also have higher ideals. We want to promote social awareness of the issue and concerns, and also inculcate the spirit of voluntarism members. The first one is actually, as we went into it, we find that while all things are, you better start 
younger people. Yeah. Because if you look at the situation in Singapore, I got two quite grown up children. Yeah, well, one boy, one girl, one in Auckland, one in Munich. <laughs> and I know that uh, young people's thinking is very different. Yeah? Um, but uh, sooner or later, you also reach this stage in life. Yeah? And when you reach this stage in life, um, you have acquired a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom in a sense, which actually could have moved you much better and much faster if you had known of it earlier. So in a way, uh, uh, Mujek, we are very interested to promote is what we call intergenerational sharing and fellowship. Again, using the same principle. Not because I'm more senior, but because I'm older. No. The old have something to teach the young. The young also have something to teach the old. And one, two very clear examples is this. In terms of career pathing, in terms of experience, I think the older ones have an edge. They've been through it. Yeah? In terms of modern day technology, headphones, uh, social media, and so on, the younger people have managed. Yeah? So, we are starting a project, I think with uh, Shenton Rotary Club, where we are going to pair an older person and a younger person together. Uh, one will be above 50, the other one will be under 30. Yeah? And we are saying each teach the other uh, some skill. And in the process, develop some friendship, which would be very different from parent and children type of relationship. And through that also, uh, have a better understanding of each other, of, of, and of each other's generation. Because times are different at different ages. Yeah. So this, this where uh, is reflective of concern to promote awareness of aging issues and so on, and to start with younger people. So I'm glad to know there are some younger people here, yeah, and also this comes from the spirit of volunteerism, which I have observed over there, youth race in the uh, Australia, in UK, and so on. Yeah, where people happily teach, share, yeah, without expecting things in return. And I'm glad to say that uh, when we implemented it here, we find that uh, people do really appreciate because the, our trainers, our facilitators actually highly qualified, highly experienced, yeah? I mean, the, to ask them to teach courses and so on, each participant probably will pay hundreds of dollars and so on. But here, they're virtually getting free. So they're all very appreciative. And we find that that, that uh, sharing is also very valued. And when they appreciate, the trainer also feel happy, yeah? And uh, even uh, prepared to share more. So actually, it's working out uh, very well. How do you advertise? Uh, uh, let me come to that. <laughs> you are very marketing oriented. <laughs> okay. Um, now, we want to provide a range of programs and activities to keep the people mentally fit and mentally alert and therefore apply <coughs> their abilities to live meaningful and uh, happy lives. How do we do this? I'm not quite sure I'm going to start with that, but I will, I'd like to introduce the concept of uh, learning communities. You see, when the, you take up a course, whether at university or even the other places, the focus is on what? The course itself, the learning experience. We all come together, yeah, learn things, and after the course, what happens? Okay. <laughs> you disperse, isn't yeah, it? Friendship. Yeah. Yeah, the concept of learning in new ways is very different. The focus is not so much uh, on the learning, although that is uh, of interest, but it's on the people doing the learning. Yeah? So it's on the learning community. So a group of people come together, interested in learning about a particular topic, yeah? and meet on a regular basis to further their learning in this area. And we try to make learning uh, more fun, more experiential, not just a lecture or session, but there could be talks and so on. Yeah? And also it make it very self-directed. The learners decide what they want to learn. Yeah? And, but we always provide a learning facilitator who is an expert in that area. And you will plan, map up a, a course of uh, learning sessions. Yeah? 
and then people come on a week, uh, monthly basis, and during that period, they get to know one another better also. Uh, in fact, one improvement we want to make on our learning communities is also to have some sort of uh, membership uh, idea. Because at the moment, we've got about six or seven learning communities. Uh, people go from one to the other, and uh, they tend to lose their identity as to which one they belong to. So in a new year coming, we are going to have a fresh series of uh, uh, programs, and we are going to have uh, some sort of uh, membership involved. So you must be admitted to this group before you uh, become part of this learning community. And hopefully uh, from that, you uh, uh, make the groups uh, stronger. Whether you work or not, I'll tell you next year. <laughs> Yeah, but this is how we are progressing. Learning all the time, improving all the time, but with the aim of uh, benefiting the people who participate. Yeah. Um, so, our operating philosophy is, as I explained, the spirit of volunteerism, fun in learning, and to make it very affordable. In fact, how affordable is affordable? Our um, current fees are $50 entrance and $30 uh, uh, annual subscription. In fact, we are uh, going to make it even uh, cheaper. Yeah. So in the new year, we're going to abolish the uh, entrance fee of $50 for those above 50. Yeah. <laughs> so younger people still got to pay the $50. And then every year is a $30 uh, subscription. But once you pay that, all the other activities are FOC, practically, except certain courses where there's some cost involved. Yeah. So can you see that once you pay your subscription, you actually uh, can partake in any courses, as many as you like, without paying anything more. Yeah. Uh, okay. What are the materials? Uh, other than, let's say, photography or whatever, uh, you, of course you can buy your own camera and so on. Yeah. And we also conceptualized, and this is a more a Singapore thing than worldwide uh, community. We thought very carefully uh, to the society that we live in, and to the sort of interest areas that we think people are interested in. And we thought uh, this six learning suite will cover most of what uh, people in this age group would really uh, need to know or want to learn about. First and foremost will be financial. Yeah, very important. Yeah? You must have, I mean, you, you don't need to be very rich, but you must have uh, enough money to last you yeah, for the rest of, of your life. And once you retire, your source of income diminishes. You have to live on your savings. So you have to learn things about uh, how to, and you are uh, one of the lucky few who have got a pile of money. You must also learn how to invest this wisely and so on. And I'm sad to say that uh, in Singapore, uh, financial advisors, uh, I think I'm many of them don't have your interest at heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my experience. <laughs> Most interest they, they have in mind, first and foremost, yeah, yeah, yeah. their company. They're there no, to make money. Own, and then their own, own interest yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I noticed uh, a big difference. You know? When I was uh, in New Zealand, I think last year, I went to see a, a bank, bank, banker. And the way she treated me was very different from the way financial advisors treat me here. Yeah. I can sense uh, that they are not trying to <laughs> get money from me, get me to invest in this and this and that. They really have uh, my interest in a sense. They don't push it. Yeah? And I find it a very, uh, very pleasant experience. Whereas here, it's uh, quite a different story. Yeah? So, and in fact, uh, talking to many of my contemporaries, we found that uh, if you learn a bit about uh, by yourself, various investment avenues and way, you actually make more money than you yeah, have. In fact, uh, one of my friends or the whole family more supported million dollars through uh, misguided advice. <laughs> so these things can happen. Yeah. And like all things, uh, if you take a trouble to learn a bit, I think in the end, I think you will benefit much more from it. So in this area, we try to come up with learning activities. In fact, I've just formed uh, what I call an investment learning 
community uh, with my own club. We don't feel the club of Singapore enough. So every two months, we're going to have a session on how to invest wisely. Yeah. And our first session, we have run a truly excellent talk by someone who was actually MD of uh, uh, quite a number of major MMC companies. And then he came down, came out, and started his uh, own business. And started a chain of uh, restaurants. Now, this type of entrepreneur is very different from uh, <laughs> Many entrepreneurs who just got a wild idea and say, let me do something. I think people who work in the MMCs, they are very systematic. They were way risk. They were have proper uh, what call it, plans and uh, action plans and uh, KPIs even you know, to guide their, guide their uh, uh, actions. And uh, within three years, he has a chain of uh, three, four restaurants already. And he's going to help me develop a program to nurture retiree entrepreneurs. And when I discuss with him, I begin to realize that uh, when people are retired, they're still healthy, they're still active, they still want to do things, yeah, but they don't want to work full time. They want to don't have a boss. <laughs> and what better uh, way to retire than to set up your own, maybe a small cafe, you know? yeah. Uh, and uh, run it. Uh, may not make a lot of money, but to your own effort and so on. It's something to call your own. It can be a husband and wife team, it can be two partners and so on. Yeah. Uh, so that is the sort of uh, concept we want to nurture. And, and I think uh, our uh, concept of uh, helping people uh, to come into work for is not to make them employees anymore, but to make them self sufficient, engage in activity, own. Uh, the restaurant or some other small business uh, which they uh, have an interest in and can not make mon big money but uh, enough to, to, to carry on the rest of their life. So this is another learning community uh, coming up. Yeah? Um, now, with that, I've given you the basic of the U3A uh, concept and uh, what happened is I've invited your club to join us as a founder partner by starting a project. It can be a simple project, it can be a complicated project. I have um, so far three partnerships already. One is with the own club, we have formed the investment learning community. Yeah? Another is with Rosary Club Shenton, we formed an intergeneration uh, fellowship project. Yeah? And thirdly, uh, with the Queenstown and the foundation, we are starting a mental fitness game. Yeah? And if you're interested this weekend, uh, we are launching uh, this program. Yeah? Uh, and you can actually come and participate in the game. I won't say too much about that. Yeah? So, and I don't know what we can do with your club. I think it must be something that you are interested in. Yeah? And I think looking at uh, the people here, uh, you also must have the uh, time and energy to want to do something. So we can discuss further. So with that, thank you very much. Okay. So we have a question for you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any question? No. Yeah. What are some of the actual programs that you are doing now? Oh, okay. I mean, where and how yeah. you conduct your actual okay. program? One very interesting program we have uh, is uh, what we call film night, or we call it. Uh, in fact, we name it after the first film we watch, uh, Peaceful Warrior. So what we do is, once a month, we came together to watch a film. And so happened, we got people who know how to choose very good films. Uh, and uh, we watch it, and then we discuss it. Yeah. That is the type of learning activity. Yeah. And some of the films are really good. Uh, the one I saw, I mean, I've seen before, is called Departures. You will see the film Departures. Oh, it's really moving. Yeah. Another, was the three idiots. <laughs> that's the Indian movie. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, it's truly wonderful. Uh, the humor in there and there's a the life's uh, teachings in there. I have a DVD so, you, you watch a movie in the cinema? No, no, no. We, we are fortunate. We got someone uh, who allow us to use that premises to do so. In fact, he's, uh, he's an architect. He owns a building. 
and uh, he has a family space, uh, an art gallery, which he allow us to use uh, for our seminars. Yeah. And now we have an arrangement with the uh, foundation, and we can use some of the premises here as well. So this one activity. Another activity I, uh, we have is the uh, photography. In fact, uh, you can, you, we have to pay a lot to attend the photography course, but our trainer is truly excellent. Yeah? He was a media director, in fact, he's a vocabulary. Yeah? What's his name? Ho Chi Kang. Yeah? And he conducts this what every Saturday it? morning. Do, Do Chi Kang. Yeah? He's heading our PR company. And uh, he gave a series of uh, uh, sessions on portrait photography, yeah, on the scenery photography, on the macro photography, taking pictures of uh, very small things, yeah. And there's going to be one on night photography, yeah. So each time uh, we do it in a very practical way. Uh, he will give you some tips and so on. Then you will go and take your own photographs. Then after that, next session we will show some of the photographs are taken and comment on it. And that's how we learn. And which type of camera you require? He can advise you to... In <laughs> fact, uh, you can start a very simple camera. You don't have to invest in like this one. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> 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 okay, can I ask you, uh, yeah. how do you all screen the uh, trainers? Like, for instance, people can teach financial matters. They yes. want to sell insurance to all the old people. We make sure we don't count. In fact, uh, in our investment learning company, tell all speakers you cannot uh, promote your product or your services. It is purely education. And we are very particular about this. You know, we don't want to turn it into an opportunity for people to come in and make a quick buck. That's not our idea. So you will make notes to the trainers before yes. they come and pick yes. You have to interview them? Yes. Actually, we have no shortage of trainers. Business. Some of the trainers are really very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we always welcome more. Mm -hmm. And they must be experts in that particular area. And also have the uh, heart to share. We never, we don't pay our students. So, so far, do you uh, encounter any problem with the students? Like, uh, for instance, you already run the the courses, like what you say, yes. the car run for intergeneration. For yes. People, yeah? That one is just started. Yeah. 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 No, no problem. Yet. Uh, no problem. Uh, problems. Uh, I don't know. Maybe yeah. yeah uh, they feel uncomfortable with it or anything. Uh, I mean, in general, do you face problems with students who are of this age? Ah, actually, it's an interesting question. You know, we differentiate adult learning uh, from the school children learning. Yeah? Uh, it's very different. I'm beginning to realize uh, people at this age, uh, also the learning are very different. Yeah? For one thing, memory is not so good. They <laughs> 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 could not take in large chunks of information and so on. Yeah? Uh, secondly, um, their attention span is uh, shorter. So you have to engage them in activities and so on. Yeah? Uh, rather than the long lectures and so on. Yeah? And then, um, but. Stubborn? <laughs> <laughs> that can be stubborn. But they all, if you treat them right, they have a lot of things to share. Yeah? So it's, the, it's how you manage them as well. Um, so I would say problems, yes, in a sense that everybody is different, you know, like where, you know, everywhere there are, there are problems, you know, that's how we manage them. So far, how big is the, the, the class size? Like the other day you have a risk management program, how many people that are Oh, that one, uh, we make it one of our lunch meetings. Oh. Uh, so together, I think it was about 25 people or so. Yeah? So that was actually part of our rotary lunch. But right now you, you, you say you have 300 members, right? Yes. 300 members. Actually, you've got 300 members, but 150 of them are from the old school. They're very really dormant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the 150, uh, you mean they, they were members of the, the Singapore Association for Continuing Education for many uh, years. Uh, yeah? And they are not very active. Yeah? Oh, but the 150 new members that we have, so we actually double the membership. Oh. They're much more active. Yeah. And doesn't this conflict with the... Uh, one which Philip Chin is conflict with Philip Chin. That was, what is that? RSVP. 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 I'm not a member of RSVP. Oh, you're not a member. Yeah. Um, I'm sure some of the members are also your member, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the concepts, some of them are similar. You see, RSVP, I think it's very different. 
their concept is to engage uh, the elderly in voluntary work. That is the main team. Yeah? But uh, they also have a lot of uh, learning activities. So I understand actually they have uh, what we call it uh, IT lab, where they teach people new media and so on. And here I will tell you there's a difference between uh, younger and older people. Everybody wants to know about IT. So when my club heard about this and say we better get to know new media and so on. So everybody is very enthusiastic. So we actually sent, I think, about 70% of our members to RSVP to learn about this new media, Facebook and so on. After that, everything died off. <laughs> and, and that's the difference. A younger person attending such a course can take the ideas, implement it and make it work for them. Not so local. They need more hands on So that's why I'm conceptualizing this uh, intergeneration uh, uh, project where the young person can actually handhold the older person uh, on learning new, new media, problems with the computer and so on. And in return, uh, the senior people can actually provide career advice. That's the basic concept of the intergeneration fellowship. But it really bring up uh, differences between old and young in terms of what they learn, how they learn, how fast they learn. Uh, but uh, U, uh, U3A, is it incorporated in Singapore? Is it legal? How is it legally You see, um, U3A is a subsidiary of uh, SACE, Singapore Association for Company Education. SACE is a registered society. It has got members uh, who vote in their members to as a, uh, into a governing council or executive uh, committee. Registered under what? RS. RS. Yes. Everything has to be under Yes. Then uh, U3A, we registered it. We were initi initially thinking of a uh, social enterprise. So we registered it as uh, uh, under aircraft. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but we are now thinking of converting it to a company limited by guarantee, which is uh, what the foundation is also. So, so far, the founding members are all Rotarian? Or no, no, no. Also In fact, the Rotarians are only more recent phenomena. So it's largely to my influence you know, to try to form the payments. Actually, we're also forming a relationship uh, with the NUSS, National University of Singapore Society. Yeah, because I'm serving on the Elders uh, Committee. And the reason we are targeting uh, these two sets of people, the Terrians and NUSS, is we have in mind that uh, we want to meet the learning needs of a uh, group of people who are better educated, yeah, high expectations and uh, who can engage in this sort of discussion, learning and so on. Yeah? And that's why we don't do uh, Chinese language courses. Yeah? We don't do most of the courses that the uh, CCs are doing. Yeah? So we are aiming for this population. It's not that we are being elitist or whatever, but we believe that uh, in future, all the retirees will be in this category. Yeah? Better educated, yeah? high expectations, yeah, and expecting uh, able to interact in a, in a more professional way. So we partner with NUSS, can yes. we use <coughs> NUSS facilities? Uh, I suppose we can. For example, we are planning to have a major conference with them next year <coughs> uh, on some other <coughs> issues. Yeah. And we're going to organize this as an international conference. In fact, the committee has been set up three from NUSS, three from uh, from the uh, U3A, yeah? and we hope to have at least a few hundred people and they are going to allow us to use uh, NUS uh, Guild Hall. Guild yeah. Hall is not that big. Uh, Cambridge. Cannot hold 600. Cannot what? Cannot hold 600 people. No, not 600. I think four, three, 400 will be happy. Okay. Uh, some question because yes. um, <clears throat> I quite like this U3A. Yes. Uh, okay, because I'm not 50 and I'm looking for long term. You definitely don't look 50. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, so uh, but my understanding is that uh, I'm looking like the entry yes. below 40 is can you have to pay for it. How to 
qualified or eligible for Actually, it? Actually, the only difference is you paid the entrance fee. That's okay. Not fifty dollars more. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have young uh, discrimination. Oh. Youth discrimination. Kim <laughs> Seng can give for you also. <laughs> the minimum age fifty. Sorry. Because they were saying. Oh, at fifty. Yeah. Uh, fifty, 50, 50, 50 over. Mm -hmm. We give you special rates. Oh, okay. Okay. Because the discount, whole discount. organization is actually geared for for yeah. these people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you also want young people. Yeah, so about the base, fifty dollar more. Yeah. Can I ask you the structure yeah. of UA three A? Yes. Is it like a normal university where you have a chance to? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, I'm saying. Sorry, Sorry, Sorry. I want to, I want to nominate him. Uh, sorry, just now you are saying this is going uh, to be under UA three A doesn't uh, doesn't uh, award degrees, <coughs> but no admission qualifications at all. It's purely learning for learning sake. Because just now we were saying uh, it's going to be ACRA and on entity wise, uh, yes. Uh, but the mission still continue to provide for the people who are above fifty for free. That uh, kind of mission. Yes, yes. That's okay. that's the whole idea. But they still pay thirty dollars. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I think it's okay to get people to pay so that if they come to a community that they can learn. Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes it's very boring when you don't have a lunch kaki. Uh. Yeah. Uh, it, it can be yes. quite when you hit retirees. The word because today retirees yeah. can be. You don't know when uh, because today retirees can be thirty five. Yeah. Because yeah. billions air are now younger so, and younger. So, yeah. so some of them they just want the kind of people yes. where they sit down and yes. enjoy, have lunch kaki, yes. and then they strike ideas to come yes. out. And so, is quite right. One intern generation makes as well. Yeah. In fact. I'm not an advocate of old folks homes. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, it's quite depressing. depressing. Yeah. You make friends with all these old folks live together, then yeah. put my butt and disappear. <laughs> 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 So I'm like, yeah. I'm happy to mix with those because uh, my my friends, most of them are above fifty. Mm -hmm. I really learned a lot from them. Yes. yes. So uh, the same thing also because yes. uh, when I learned from them, yes. when they say, hey, but like you say the technology thing, ah, but you help, help them a bit. Yes. Yeah. And they're like, I'm not yes. very good, but yeah. sometimes we have younger friends go yes. along and yes. solve their yeah. issues. <laughs> so that's where the, the bonding and friendship lies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.